Naming and Formula Writing Review. Some useful items for this review to have out will be a table of elements, a polyatomic ions list, and a diatomic elements list. So first we're going to start out by reviewing ionic compounds. So in ionic compounds, electrons are transferred from one atom or ion to another. This will result in a cation, which will have a positive charge, and an anion, which will have a negative charge. Now usually the cation is going to be a metal, and your anion is going to be a non-metal, but it could also include a polyatomic ion. So when you add together the charges on an ionic compound, those charges should add up to zero. So polyatomic ions are many atoms that are chemically bonded together with one overall charge. They tend to end with eight or ite. So when you see a ion whose name ends with eight or ite, there's a good chance that it's a polyatomic ion. There are a couple that end with ide too. And sometimes your metal is a transition metal. Remember, this can have more than one possible charge. So if you have a transition metal, you're going to need to determine the charge. And then when you write this in the name, you're going to include this as a Roman numeral. If the ending is a non-metal, if the ending element is a non-metal, you're going to change it to end with ide. So for example, chlorine would become chloride. So here are a few examples here. So the first one here, we have Ca, which is calcium. And calcium is in the plus two uh, column on the table of elements. So there's no need for a Roman numeral because we know calcium is always plus two. OH, we see how there's two different elements here. That gives us a hint that we are dealing with a polyatomic ion here. So this would just be calcium hydroxide. My next example is iron three fluoride. So iron is one of those transition metals in the middle of the periodic table that can have multiple charges. So in this name, we've indicated the charge to you. So the three, the Roman numeral three, is not telling you that there are three irons. It's telling you that the charge on the iron is plus three. And fluoride used to be fluorine, which forms a minus one charge. So that means that my formula, whenever I balance it, is going to be FeF3. We need three of those Fs because they have a minus one charge to balance out the plus three on the Fe, the iron. Next up, we have CuSO4. So we have copper, sulfur, and oxygen. So that's a big hint that there's a polyatomic ion involved here. So Cu is copper, and copper is another one of those elements where it can have multiple charges. So it's another one of those transition metals. So I don't know the charge on copper, but SO4 is sulfate, and the charge on sulfate is always minus 2. Now here we have two sulfates. So that tells us that my total negative charge is negative Four. So that means that my positive charge on the copper here must be positive four. So I would write that as a Roman numeral. Last one here, magnesium chloride. Notice there's no Roman numeral for magnesium because it's in the second column and its charge is always plus two. Chloride used to be chlorine, and its charge is minus 1. So in order for my charges to add up to 0, I need two chlorines. Each chlorine gives me minus 1 for a total of minus 2 to balance out the plus 2 on the magnesium. Next, let's discuss molecular compounds. So molecular compounds are a little different uh, because electrons are going to be shared instead of transferred, and they're going to be shared between non-metal atom. 
So nonmetal atoms are going to form my uh, molecular compounds. Now those electrons can be shared in a single bond, which is two electrons, a double bond, which is four, or a triple bond, which is six electrons. And when we name molecular compounds, we're going to use our prefixes. So mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca. One important thing is that the first element should not start with mono. And the ending element, we're going to change that to end with i, just like we did for our ionic compounds. And there are some special cases. Your diatomic molecules, uh, these are special cases. Di means two. So these would be hydrogen, nitrogen, fluorine, oxygen, iodine, chlorine, and bromine. So those seven elements are always going to be diatomic when they are by themselves. So if you had just plain old uh, iodine, it wouldn't be I, it would be I2. So let's look at a couple of examples here. So first one here, I have hydrogen, and there's two of them. So we're going to call this dihydrogen, and there's one oxygen. Oxygen will become oxide, and since there's only one, we're going to call it monoxide. So dihydrogen monoxide, also known as water. Carbon dioxide. So there's no prefix in front of the carbon, which means just one. And dioxide means two oxygens. Then we have O2. So we are not going to call this dioxygen uh, or even dioxide. None of those will be correct. The correct name for this is just plain old oxygen. For sulfur hexafluoride, again, there's no prefix in front of the sulfur, so that must mean just one. And we have hexafluoride, so fluoride is F, and we have six of them. So now let's go ahead and discuss acids. So acids are going to start with hydrogen, or they're going to end with the word acid. So obviously if the name acid is there, then you know that it is an acid. Now these charges should still add up to zero, just like we saw with our ionic compounds. So we want the total charges to still add up to zero. Now when you name an acid, you have to look at the thing that isn't hydrogen and figure out what that is called. If the thing that isn't hydrogen ends with "-ide", you're going to name it as hydroblankic acid. If it ends with eight, you're going to name it just ic acid, no hydro. And if it ends with ite, we're going to name it blank us acid. So let's look at a couple of examples here. So if with this first acid here, I have H2S. So I need to figure out what this S is called. So this is sulfur, but since it's in a compound, it would be called sulfide. So I'm going to name this as hydro blank ic acid. So we're going to put this part into the blank. So hydrosulfic. Now the sulfur acids are a little bit odd. So sometimes you'll see it like this, hydrosulfuric acid. Those names are both the same, though the bottom one is a little bit more correct, a little bit more typical for what you'd expect to find. My next acid is chloric acid. See how this is an ic acid? So the ic acid here is telling me that this chlor was originally chlorate because it's called an ic acid. So I got to figure out what chlorate is. So looking on my polyatomic ion chart, chlorate is ClO minus, ClO3 minus 1. So since this is an acid, we're going to put an H in front, and the H is plus 1. So these charges are already balanced, so the formula would be HClO3 for chloric acid. Next I have HCl. So this Cl is chlorine in a compound. It is chloride. So since it ends with ide, I'm going to name this as hydroblankic acid. 
And this chlor is going to go in the blank here. So that would be hydrochloric acid. This last one, sulfurous acid, again, you might see that as sulfous acid. But what matters here is that this is an us acid. So the fact that this is an us acid tells me that this sulfur originally ended with it. So I originally had sulfite. So I got to figure out what sulfite is using my polyatomic ions. Sulfite is SO3 with a minus 2 charge. Since this is an acid, we're going to start with H+. Now, in order for these charges to be balanced, I'm going to need two of these H pluses to give me plus two to balance out the minus two. So the correct formula here would be H2SO3. So you're going to fill out a chart here where you're going to identify if the compound is ionic, molecular, or acid. And then you're going to either fill in the name or the formula. So looking at this first example here, I have Na, this is a metal, and then CO3 is a polyatomic ion. So a metal and a polyatomic ion means that this is ionic. So in order to name this, I need to name each ion. So Na is called sodium, and sodium is in the first column on the periodic table. Its charge is always going to be plus one. So I don't need a Roman numeral because we know sodium is always plus one. It's not like iron or copper or those types of compounds, those types of metals, where there could be multiple charges. And then I have my polyatomic ion, CO3, which is just called carbonate. Now you may have noticed in this formula, there's two sodiums for every one carbonate. Sodium is plus one and carbonate is minus two. So I need two sodiums to balance out the minus two on, car on carbonate. My next example is dinitrogen trioxide. So nitrogen is a non-metal and oxygen is a non-metal. So this tells me that I must have a molecular compound. So when we name molecular compounds, we just use our prefixes. Dinitrogen tells me two nitrogens. Trioxide tells me three oxygens.